I'm going to show you how to model this binder clip. It will use a revolute joint so that the handles can rotate around the binder clip and stay in place. It will also use offset paths in the sketch and we'll show you how to create a pipe so we can make that chrome handle. First, press Control S or Command S on your keyboard to save your design. Type binder clip. Then we'll use rule number one in Fusion 360. We'll create a component. Label the component clip. Then we'll create a sketch. We'll create this sketch on the front face. We want to create a two point rectangle, but first change the line type in your sketch palette to construction. Then click two point rectangle, click the origin and drag up a bit. Make sure you uncheck construction lines. Now we want to draw a two tangent circle. So click two tangent circle, click this line and this line, and then draw your circle. Press D to dimension the circle for a diameter of three. Then we can make the height of our rectangle 7.625. Just move this part of the rectangle over a bit. Then we will make a new circle by pressing C and just draw a circle. Press D to make the diameter three. Then we'll use the tangent constraint to click the circle in the left side of our rectangle. Now we will press Shift A or Create Arc Three Point Arc. Click this circle and this circle and make our arc. Use the tangent constraints to make a tangent to both circles. Then we will give it a dimension with a radius of 50. Next, we'll draw an arc from this circle down to the bottom. So press Shift A or Create Arc Three Point Arc. Click this circle and the bottom and draw your arc. It should be tangent to the circle at the top here. Now we're going to draw a new construction line. So click line type construction, then type L and draw straight up. It doesn't matter what size this is, but let's give it a dimension of four. Then we'll click tangent and make sure this arc is tangent to this line. And then we want to make sure the line is one millimeter over from the right. Perfect. Now let's finish up this side over here. We want to make sure that this point is right below the center of the circle. So we'll use the vertical constraint. Click here and then click this point and that keeps it right below. Perfect. Then we can dimension from this point to the origin over 0 0.01. That snaps it down to the bottom. We have a couple more things to do. First, we need to cut this circle. To do that, we'll make some new construction lines. We still have construction lines selected, so press L, then click down, then over. We need to dimension this. This should be approximately 0.5. And then we'll give this a dimension angle by clicking the line, then clicking the other line, and then dragging out and typing 100. We can use the modify break command to break this line at these two points. We can do the same thing with this line, break it at those two points. Then we'll press escape, select the line, and make it a construction line. We'll do the same thing with this line, select the line, then make it a construction line. Now it is a good time to see if our sketch is fully constrained. We can tell that by twirling out the sketches and looking for a red padlock. In this case, our sketch is fully constrained. Now make sure you uncheck construction on line type because we want to draw a normal line. You should be able to double click this line and select everything. Then we can make the offset path go in just like this and it should be 0.37. And you may have to type a negative number to get your offset path to go the right way. Then I'll press OK. We need to connect this line to this line. So press L and connect the lines together. So now we only have half the binder clip. We want to make this a mirror. So press escape, double click all the lines. They should all be selected now. Then we'll click mirror. We have the objects. Now we need the mirror line. So we'll select this bottom line. Now we have a mirror of the binder clip. This sketch is now complete. So finish the sketch. Now we can orbit to look at our binder clip sketch profile. Let's extrude it by clicking the extrude command. We want to do a symmetric extrude and our distance will be 16. Now we have a 32 millimeter wide binder clip frame. 
on a binder clip, parts of this are cut out so you can actually put the handles in. So let's go ahead and make those cuts. To do that, we'll create a new sketch. So click Create Sketch, then click the side of the binder clip. First, we need to press P to project the binder clip into our sketch. Now we can see the binder clip parts in this sketch. Press L and draw a line from the both centers. Then press Escape, drag from this center out to the far line, then drag from this center out to the far line. Press D, click this line, then this line, and then we're going to type an angle of 165. We'll press D again, click this line and this line, drag out for the angle, and this time we'll just click 165 so they're the same. So now we're ready to make our extrude. So we will press E, then we'll click this face and this face, and our start will be an offset. Our offset will be negative 7.75. And then our distance will be 16.5, negative 16.5. So now you can see that this is going to cut out that section in the middle. Excellent. So press OK. If you look at a binder clip, there are more cutouts. A machine comes from this side and cuts out both parts so we can put in the clip handle. If you look from the front, you can see that the tangent of these binder clips is vertical. So we can draw on the front sketch plane. Next, we need to create a sketch. We can create it on the right hand side, and then we need to project some of the binder clip pieces in. So we'll press P, and we want to get this piece and this piece, and we also need the pieces on the bottom. So we need this piece and this piece, and then orbit around, and you'll need this piece and this piece, and then you can press OK. If we look at the left hand side, you can see now we have these different pieces. Now it's time to draw in the cutouts. To do this, we can start right here at the top. We'll press L and we will draw a line that is 7.5 long. Then we'll use the midpoint constraint to click this line and the origin. Then we'll use the distance to click this point and the origin and go up, click 7.5 divided by 2. Now this should be centered. Now we'll draw the cutout pieces. So we'll draw a line coming down, and it's going to be at an angle, and then we'll draw straight over, and then we'll draw straight back up to this section. We want to make sure that this line is collinear with the origin. So we can click this line here and this line. That'll make it coincident. You can see that turn black. We also want these two lines to be parallel. So we'll use the parallel constraint to click both of those lines, make them parallel. The distance from the edge to this line is 5. So we'll click here and any of these points on the edge, drag up and type 5. And then this point needs to be coincident with this point. So we'll click here and here. And that should make it coincident. Now we need to mirror these pieces, but we need a center line. So we can create one by pressing L drawing from here straight down, click this line, and then click center line. Now we can click this piece, this piece, and this piece, click mirror, and then when it says mirror line, click this line, then press OK. Now the pieces are over here too. Now we need to reflect them down. But for this, we can use this as our center line. So once again, click mirror, and then we want this piece, and this piece, and this piece, and this piece, and our mirror line will be this line. Press OK. If this happens on your sketch, for example, if these points aren't coincident, you can click this point, coincident, and then click here. That will make sure that they are coincident, and then your sketch will be fully defined. So now we can finish our sketch. Now we need to extrude this piece but we need to mark where it's going to extrude to. To do that, we'll go ahead and construct a tangent plane. And the tangent plane will be tangent to this section, and it'll be vertical. So press OK. Then we'll extrude. Click the Extrude command, and then we want to make sure we get all the pieces. If you miss a piece, you can go back in and edit the feature. And then for the distance, we want to go to an object, and the object is this 
tangent plane. As you can see, it's going to cut out all those pieces. Press OK. We can hide the construction plane. The tool that cuts this out actually has rounded corners, so we'll simulate that by clicking these edges. Hold Shift, click the edges. Hold Shift, click the edges. Hold Shift. And we'll do the same thing over here. Hold Shift, click the edge, this edge, and this edge. Click the fillet command and type 1. So now you can see that those are rounded out as if a machine cut them. We're almost done with this piece. So let's go ahead and click this face, orbit around, click this face, and we'll click fillet, and we'll type 0 0.01. That way the edges of this aren't sharp, so you don't cut yourself. Excellent, so the binder clip is looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and activate the top level. Then we'll create a new component. And we'll call this handle. We need to create a sketch to draw the handle. Click sketch. And then I'm going to click the ground plane. It doesn't matter where we draw the handle sketch. So I'm going to start with a line. And it'll be horizontal. And then just so everything is constrained, I'll go ahead and make it coincident with the origin, and then I'll give it a distance from the origin. We'll say 50. Now, we'll give this line a dimension of four. We need to add a three-point arc, so you can press Shift-A or Create Arc Three-Point Arc. Click here, then here, and draw your arc. This will have a radius of 0.75, so press D, click here, and then 0.75. Next, we need to draw a line. So click this point and draw a line. Press Escape, and we want to make sure it's tangent to this arc. Perfect. Then we're going to draw another arc. Press Shift A, click, draw your arc. Then we can press D and give this a dimension of four. We want to make sure that this line is tangent, so click the tangent constraint and then make it tangent. This arc will be a little bit smaller, so just move it in. We'll draw another line, straight up, press escape. It will also be tangent to this arc. This point, we know the distance, so we'll click D, this bottom point, and we'll type 32. Next, we need to draw a construction line. So we'll start at the bottom line here, draw straight up, and this height will be 38. Point three. Click the line, then change it into a construction line from your sketch palette. We want to make sure the bottom of this is horizontally constrained to this point. Perfect. Now the distance over to the right will be 15. So we'll click this point, then this point, and we'll make it 15. So we can move this piece over a little bit and move it up. And then we'll move this line up to here. Next, we'll draw another arc by pressing Shift A and drag it out. And we'll draw one more arc from this arc to this point. Press Escape and then use Tangents to make these two tangent and then this and this tangent. This arc will have a radius of 2.5. Now we need one more construction line, so press L. And we'll just draw straight out from this point, horizontal. Press Escape. Press D to give it a dimension of 1. Then click the line and make it a construction line. Click Tangent and click this arc in that line. Now they'll stay tangent. We can give this point a distance from the center line. So press D. Click this point and the center line. And this will be 7.15. This point also has a distance. Click it in the center line, and it'll be 3.95. We're getting closer to having the sketch fully constrained. This should have a radius of 9. Once we give that radius, now our sketch is fully constrained. We can confirm that by looking in our sketch in the browser and seeing the red padlock. Now we're ready to create a pipe. 
So let's finish the sketch. Then in Create, select Pipe. It needs you to select a path, so we'll select the path we just made. For our pipe dimension, we will select 1.7. Now we need to mirror this. So we'll create a mirror. Then we're going to select the body. And then the mirror plane, we can just select the center circle here. Now we have a new handle that goes all the way around. This is great. One last thing we want to do is go ahead and select this face and this face, click fill it and type 0 0.01 and press OK. Click the top level component. Now we can select handle, press Ctrl or Command C, then press Ctrl or Command V to copy and paste it. We can just move it to the side. It doesn't matter where. Fusion has joints. These are a great way to assemble different components together into an assembly like this binder clip. To do that, go up to the Assemble menu and click Joint. We want to make sure we click on the Motion tab. It will be defaulted as Rigid, but you want to select Revolute. This just means Rotation. Then for the position, it says Component 1 and Component 2. So we select the position for Component 1. Let's go ahead and select the center point of the end of the handle. Then it says component two. So we'll go ahead into the binder clip. We'll select this center point. And now bam, the handle goes right there. And then we can just rotate this up. We'll type in negative 106, so it's just above the clip there. Now let's repeat the process for the other handle. Click joint. Make sure on motion it says revolute. Then for position, we'll select the handle right here in the center. And then we'll go down to this piece and select the same point. Then we'll rotate it down. And for this one, we will select negative 76, or actually negative 74. Perfect, then we can press OK. It's a good idea to go ahead and save your progress, so click Save, then press A on your keyboard to bring up the Appearance menu. For the binder clip, we can use Paint Glossy and drag on Glossy Black. Then we can use Chrome under the Metal. So we have Metal, Chrome, and then we'll drag Chrome onto the two handles. You can close the Appearance menu, and then we'll go to the Render Workspace. Here we can rotate around, and we can see what our binder clip will look like in different renderings. By having all these pieces on here, it will give us a really nice render that we can use in any kind of promotional materials. Hopefully, this tutorial showed you how to use the pipe command, how to make a joint, how to use the offset sketch command, and now you have a fancy looking binder clip of your own.